now. All right, here we go. Welcome everybody to the Craft Cafe. Happy Friday. It's your host, Latoya Riggins, host of All Things Craft. And I'm super excited for today because this is our fourth and final installment of the Men in ECE series. Now featuring, now the whole segment was about Men in ECE, but our actual features representing the movement is the DC men in ECE. And we have our very own, yes, I'm claiming it, Jamal, Jamal Berry. He runs Educare here in DC, Educare DC. And I love that place. I was one of the parents that tried to get my kids in there. So I love that he's over there. He's been a staple in the series going into what really is the, I say, the big event, <laughs> the moment that we've all been waiting for, we've kind of been gearing up for a year for this, Jamal, is the conference. So you guys, we are live. I want to make sure that we're live on Facebook. So guys, if you are watching um, at fa on Facebook, definitely put your whatever is in the chat, any feedback you got, if you want to go to the conference, if you are already connected, if you're a man in child care, then we definitely want to hear from you. We want to hear your story. So let's see. Come on in here. So Jamal, let's get you on here. I want to make sure that we are live over here. Yeah, we are in here. Okay, here we go. We're going on Facebook now. Okay. So let's do it. Good to go. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Latoya, again for another invite. We appreciate it. It's been a great series of just getting to talk about the work that we're doing. Today, I know we just want to really hone in on our um, 2024, which is our second annual citywide conference. Um, we want to be really clear about that. This is to support everybody in Washington, D.C. It is being hosted and put on by the D.C. Men in D.C., but it is not just for men. It's for women as well. It's for leaders, and so I just want to talk a little bit about what the agenda is, what our tracks are, so that we can have more people uh, register. We're already at about, the last count was 215, and our goal is 250, so okay. we need everybody that's listening to go ahead and register with us today. So we're starting on Saturday, October the 26th. Um, and the first hour is just going to be registration. There'll be a breakfast served. We'll have an open plenary session where you are hear from some leaders in the field. I will introduce a lot of them, but um, uh, David Daniels, who is the CEO of the Bainham Family Foundation, will um, open up and welcome people as well as um, Mr. Calvin Moore, who is, or Dr. Calvin Moore, who is the CEO of the Council for Professional Recognition, which if any of you have a child development associate or going through that path, he is the leader of that program. And so those are two great men that will be there. After that, we'll transition to our first round of workshops. We'll have lunch. We'll have two more workshop sessions, an afternoon refreshment break, and then the closing plenary session at about 4.45. So all in all, you're looking about eight to five that day. Now, if you're interested in what are we going to be talking about for that long, for eight to five, we have a couple of sessions. The first session is Building Resilient Leadership, and we've partnered with the DC Head Start Association and the um, TTA team for the Office of Head Start to come do some of these trainings. So we have Building Resilient Leadership. We have um, Leading the Way, Empowering ECE Leaders for Success. And then we also have the five R's of Childhood Leadership. And that is our leadership track. What we're calling our tracks is that leaders could, and, and actually anybody can do any session that they would like. However, we would make a recommendation that leaders or emerging leaders would do the leadership track. And then we have a knowledge track. And that track is really for teachers, men, women in the field current day who are still in the classroom. And so with the knowledge track, we have unlocking the potential of class, deepening daily support with instructional support. So anybody that has pre-K class or a class assessment, we're really digging into that. Um, we're talking a little bit about OSI requirements 
around the higher ed for child care. So that's just going to talk about what OSSE's um, requirements are for programs to partner with sites and then taking DAP to the classroom. So developing appropriate practices. And then also um, a partner that we had last year that is coming back to do Uncovering STEM through play. And they had amazing giveaways last year to give to people that came. So that's our knowledge track. And our last track is our equity track, which I think fathers, mothers, um, leaders, advocates, policymakers that may come may want to uh, do the equity lens track. And so the equity track, we have each and every child teaching through an equity lens. So really thinking about how we should think about um, educating our, our youngest learners, um, why equity is key to quality in early childhood education. Um, men are an essential part of the ECE workforce. And so just educating those who don't know around the, the data about the uh, men in early childhood. And then financial wellness, the pay equity initiative. So talking a little bit more about pay equity in DC and why it's so important to the field and how we pay a part in that. So that is the gist of the conference. It is wow. going to be a great long day, but a good day. And we are guaranteeing that everybody that is able to attend will be able to receive eight professional learning units. So we've worked with um, with uh, Hurley and Associates to ensure that that happens. So as long as you sign up and attend the actual day of conference, we will email that back out to you later. And Latoya, I can give you, because I don't see the ability to share, so I can give you the scan well, code. I can let you share. Mm -hmm. Let me let you share. And then I can put up the QR code. All right. Go ahead and try it now. All right. Definitely. I'm excited about this. Now, those of you, we had a couple of people walk in. We didn't do introductions yet. We kind of just jumped right into the conference because I'm so excited. I want to, you know, we're going to you know, get a deeper dive into it too and really talk more about the program itself and the organization. So that's why I wanted to stress the conference just right up front because it's coming up. So those of you who have never heard of the DC men in ECE, that what Jamal just said, a huge mouthful. So what we're really doing, I want to talk about that while he's pulling this up. Here's the QR code guys to scan and really take it seriously, you guys, because Tifa said you guys are getting AP. They they are very much acronym people here in DC, PLUs. <laughs> you said professional learning units. You get eight of them. And this conference is free, right, Jamal? Yes, ma'am. Wow. And I wouldn't even say free because people don't respect free. We'll say no at to you. We are sponsoring this for you. And I want to just make sure that you guys know that this is our fourth installment. So we've been going through a series of elements about this program and not just this program and this organization about the movement as, it's, as it is and what they're doing in DC. And Jamal, I just want to thank you for really being the driving force of this segment that we've been doing pretty much the whole summer, just highlighting what you guys are not just doing in your own careers, but really paving the way and creating opportunities for more men to come in here. So real quick, Jamal, while people are scanning this code, can you just give them a little bit of background on you and just introduce yourself? Because we're going to go around, but we're going to start with you. So the people that are on the line, um, we're live on Facebook. Hey, Facebook, those of you who are just tuning in. So you know where Jamal is coming from and his background and how he moved through this industry. Okay. And then we're going to go around and have, hey, Jamal, thanks for coming in. And we have Tanya coming on in. We're going to have you guys introduce yourselves and talk about your journey here. So Jamal, we're going to start with you. All Just right. give them a little recap. Thank you. I'll, to I'll give a, I'll give a, a, a elevator speech for who I am. So nice to uh, meet everybody who's on the panel and those who are watching as well. My name is Jamal Berry, and I am currently the president and CEO of Educare Washington, D.C. We're a school for children, birth to five in War 7. Uh, we currently serve over 400 uh, children in War 7 with a main focus on working with those who have been historically underserved. And our mission is to close the opportunity gap 
for um, children in poverty versus their, their more affluent peers. We also serve pregnant mothers as well. So my history and my path into education, I was a pre-K teacher at United Planning Organization early on in my career and then joined Educare Washington, D.C. as an infant toddler mentor teacher. That's a role that supervises and coaches teachers. I am self-proclaimed as the baby whisperer. There is not a child that um, is crying that I cannot console. And so um, that is my role at Educare Current Day, too. They call me in when, when that child is transitioning and needs support. But on a serious note, um, early childhood has just been my passion. It's something I knew I wanted to do at an early age was to impact children. And I thought that I would be a pre-K uh, sped non-categorical teacher, but there was a hiring freeze at that time in Prince George's County. And so I fell in love with Head Start and working with children that, that looked like me. So that's been my trajectory and then just have grown within the organization with creating programs and um, delivering high quality services. Wonderful. And I, I love your story, Jamal, because when you tell it, it makes me think back to when I was, like I said, I was trying to get my kids in Educare and what I loved about the center and the diversity there. And then how beautiful it is, the sunlight. It's just a beautiful facility, period. So like you said, and in the neighborhood, I lived in the neighborhood and the community was a community that, like you said, was underserved. So to have that be right there in our backyard, it was just a blessing. And it, and it really brought the neighborhood up. And I think that it was a driving force to the community development because once you guys came, it seemed like now if you go around there, it used to be just like none but land, right? You know, and now you go, you see these beautiful homes and buildings. They create, you guys have created, like set the tone for what that community now looks like, you know? And I'm like, I've moved from there since then, but I always go back like, oh, like this looks so good. So, you know, I'm, I'm just excited about that. And you guys all know that I'm, you know, deeply vested in the whole childcare community, especially in DC, being um, in workforce development and just helping businesses to find those quality staff and helping not just the businesses, but helping people who want to be in this industry, who have a, a genuine love for education and children, you know, seeing that path through. So one thing I always saw a lack of was men in it. But when I got men that would come in that would want to do it, I mean, that it, they would go like hotcakes and they will always instantly be the favorite one of the class. And I will always have to fight with the ladies. And I'm like, don't worry, look, look let them get a shot, you know? But I was like, we need more of that. We need of a balance. So this is something, like you said, being the baby whisperer that you bring to the table, that's unique, you know? So I'm just excited to have this platform to bring all of you guys together because I want more people to understand that this is a career path for men. And we also talked about the big deal of, you know, men having the responsibility of being providers and not really seeing this industry as a place where they can grow and really make a living and take care of their family. Because like I always tell you guys, you guys always look good. Y'all don't look like y'all missing no meals. So <laughs> y'all got wives and kids and homes and, you know, all kinds of things going on in your life, which means that it is a, a place where you can go and earn and really make an impact at the same time. So with that being said, I want to roll around to my friend, Mr. Dumar Burgess. Let's get you on here to introduce yourself yeah. and come on in here. Hey, how you guys doing? I'm I'm sorry. I wasn't prepared for all this. But, um, I know. I did just invite him like a couple of days ago, yeah, but I told it, you about it. But it, it, it is it is all good. It is all good. Um, my name is Dumar Burgess. I'm the principal uh, of Bret Hart Elementary School and in New Jersey, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Um, this is my 28th year in education. Most of them been at the early childhood, uh, at the elementary level where I serve as students from pre-K three through fifth grade. Um, I think when uh, Latoya and I met, I told her, she was talk talking to me about the early childhood experience. I said, you know, I have an early childhood degree. Literally my, my, my degree is in early childhood and elementary education. Um, so I've been working with students and this, most of the work that I do has been in this space of, pre-K through three through sixth grade. Wow. And currently is is fifth grade. Um, while I don't have a early childhood program in the building I'm currently in, for the 15 years I was at my last school, I did. We have four-year-olds through fourth grade, and I was there for 13 years. Wow. So um, in addition to that, you know, like I'm a public educator, I've been working in public education for 28 years, um, did a lot of work in literacy, 
um, from pre-K on through, really geared, put a lot of emphasis on social emotional development, um, was working on my doctorate for a number of years and looking at how mental health impacts administrators and not just how the mental health of their staff, but really like how do we service students in their community and how do we relate to it? So that's a brief. <laughs> that that's a, that's it right there. And a brief see, um, explanation, you know. Describe. That's why I wanted you to come because, um, like Jamal was saying, like with his journey, and I, what I realize is, you know, when men come into the platform, well, not the platform, but the industry, a lot of times they do they come in through a certain door. And one thing I love that Jamal says that we're we we can do more than just move boxes, you know. <laughs> And drive the van and you know all of that good stuff we can educate too we can nurture we can mentor you know so i love that they're not just talking about it they're being about it by creating these opportunities for mentorship and things like that now dumar do you guys do anything with mentorship and things like that where you guys are absolutely absolutely so uh, as part of so we have a lot of requirements too so as part of your requirements anybody who enters into my building i have to provide i mean enter my building building as a new or non-tenure teacher um i have to provide supports for so we normally do mentoring um we normally create our mentoring network within the staff here but sometimes we have to look outside our building so i'm fortunate enough to be in a pretty big district compared to new jersey mm -hmm. like it's the largest district in south jersey um we have we have 12 elementary schools and two early childhood programs. We actually just um, expanded our early childhood program where, where over the next two years, we'll have about 10,000 kids wow. um, who will support bringing through a number of different ways through our immediate building, but also partnering with some of the local daycares too. That's the part. I, yeah. I, that's what we were talking about. Because yeah. I was, okay, guys, y'all have to understand, I work with early childhood educators all the time. So I love the school districts, but the school districts, it's, I don't, they're always like a rifle because the more you guys do with the pre K3 yeah. going lower and lower, yeah. it kind of is always takes out of the child care. So I want to hear more about the partnership with those yeah. child care centers. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so, so I'm not the expert in that, but I, I can tell you what I know about it, right? Yeah, um, okay. Because, That's all I need. That's all I need. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't work discussion. in that space. Um, my own girl, Danielle, is, is over there running the early childhood um, program, and Dr. Mayhem is the director of it. Um, but we had we have grants that run over here. I'm not sure if the grants, the grant expans, expansion run across the country for providing early childhood education. Um, so all, we're trying to provide it to all, all kids. Mm -hmm. um, across New Jersey. So a number of years ago when we did it at, in Willingboro, when I worked there, we was like one of the first schools to get the grant money. So then every year the grant expansions we took advantage of to where we had to open up multiple, we had to open up two buildings to house our, our program. So it went from, originally it went from having like one class in a building to two classes to, to that the program became so big and that's such a unique population to support that they decided to reconfigure the district. So here in Cherry Hill, which is a, a, a little bit behind where I was in, in Willingboro, where they just started offering full day kindergarten, uh, I guess three years ago. Um, and then they applied for the grant for early childhood, for the early childhood program, which we only have for about two years. And then we applied for the grant expansion, which we don't have the capacity to support all the kids with the, the infrastructure that we have here. So then we have to partner up with um, local daycare providers or local early childhood programs to provide those services outside of the school walls, even though we still have to monitor and manage it and ensure that, that it meets certain criteria. But I'm not the expert in it. I wasn't- No, a but I love group. that, that you guys are including them. Yeah. Now, with that, that's just a little sidebar because of my love for, for uh, child care and family child care. Um, so I have to go there. But I want to get back on the whole thing with having being a man in this industry with what you've been through as far as, you know, going to school for early education. Did you see a lot of men around? Did, was what? that a, ever an issue for you or anything like that? Um, absolutely not. Um, oftentimes I was one of the only males in the building um, as a principal. Um, typically, I was one of the few. It was normally me and my and my head custodian, you know, um, <laughs> But we did see a push in the, in the late 90s for more, like when we, when we started allowing um, people to enter the profession through alternate route. So at that point, I remember mentoring a number of people that came from the military who came, um, men who, mentor, who who entered the profession that way. 
Um, there was a lot of guys coming from the business business world to come through, but then the laws kind of changed because you had to be highly qualified in order to enter. So once No Child Left Behind came through, we saw that there was a bigger emphasis, which which was understood is, is that you need to have highly qualified people in front of kids. And some of those alternate route folks didn't come with the pedagogy of understanding how the philosophies and theories behind teaching and learning, even though some of them went on to do fantastic things. Um, yeah. Some didn't, right? Just like some educators enter enter the space and do fantastic things. And there's always a small group who don't. So, but that was a need to make sure that in front of all our kids was a highly qualified person, but then it became more challenging. Now you had to have people who went through a traditional route to get the certification. Yeah, Most people, a lot of people like, well, I went traditional route to become a teacher. There's a lot of people who enter it through different doors, but they didn't go because the money, it wasn't always there. Even though the money has greatly improved over, over the past few years, and hopefully it'll improve a lot more over the next few years, right? Um, that people, it wasn't attracting a lot of people because people were going to corporate and things like that, or going into science, technology, and places where they knew they, they that they could earn um, a higher wage or whatever. Yeah, so hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, it did. Because, you know, I, I'd like to get different perspectives because, like I said, we're in D.C. And the fact that, like I said, you started with the early ed and just looking at those, what those opportunities look like and what the career path could look like. Um, and what Jamal and the guys over at DC Men and ECE are doing, I, it just, it's, it's, it's so amazing because they all have their own lanes in their own right. And then they're coming together to do this. So let's see, Jamal, are you still there? While we're, he's getting it, because I want you to show that QR code again, please, just to make sure that people got it. And um, guys, um, if you have any questions, um, Jamal, he's also, I believe your contact information is on that visual too, Jamal. Okay, perfect. Because what I want to do is make sure that we get to that 250. If you have to come from out of town, it's definitely worth it. We got people coming in from Philly for it. We got definitely people coming from all over to come to this conference. It's worth coming to and really getting your, I was say CEUs, your PLUs. Okay, now you can follow them on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, you guys, I love y'all, y'all LinkedIn. I'm always stalking y'all LinkedIn to see what's new, because you guys know I love social media, so I'm always on there checking out everybody. Let's see. Um, while we're scanning that, let's see. Is it Tonya or Tanya? Definitely. Can you come on and say hi and introduce yourself? I want to see who who's on the line. Yeah, there you are. It's Tanya. How how are Tanya. you? Tanya. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I did go to the DC um, ECE for men last year yes. um, when they first started and, and it was very uh, informative and I, I look forward to going back again um, this year. Oh, wow. So tell us about yourself. What's your, are you in ECE? What's your connection in, into the industry? Well, I'm actually um, a, a legacy owner. Oh. Um my 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 father started a uh, child care center um in ward um seven so i'm actually following his path so i just want to learn more about the the industry and 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 how can i be a part of the the you know the path i love that so you grew up watching your dad own a child care center yes ma'am wow what was that like like in the community, tell me more. I, you know, y'all know I love to hear the stories. Like I need to know, like what was that like? Because like Jamal and Jamal just said, like they're usually like the only guy, and it's mostly women. So what? How did that affect you growing up? Just watching him do that. It was um, it was amazing because my father. I mean, of course, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, and you know, I'm going to toot my father's horn. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father's girl. Um, mm -hmm. so. So watching him do that as a man, it was very uh, intriguing for me. And for 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 a man to 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 actually start a child care center, that's that's amazing. You know, yeah. um, it, it's we it's four of us, so um, this is something that he started, and and this is something that I want to continue on and keeping his legacy going. Even though my father is still um, breathing, is still living, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I get everything I can get from him in order to keep his legacy thriving. 
I love that. Now, let me ask you this. Um, did he hire other men in the center? Did you see that also? Like more men coming together since he was running it? No, you know, I don't even know if he knew anything about it. Quite honestly, for, um, you know, quite to be quite honest. And, and now that I am bringing this to him, he is he's all for it. Wow. That's awesome. I love this. So do you have any um sons or anything like that that can take the torch from you? I do have. I have two sons. I have two sons and a daughter and wow. a grandson and a grandson. And I do want to get with you um offline i i can i can give you my information uh actually i am on my phone so okay i don't i don't know how to do um <laughs> oh how to know. put it in there so listen you did you sign in with your email because everybody listen my my email is l riggins at better futures dc.com so i did sign into my email what you say I said, yeah, I did sign in through my email. Can you give it to me one more? Like, okay, once I'll say again? it one more time. And I can get, if you sign in with your email, I can also snag yours. But here we go. It's L, you see the little on the screen, L Riggins, R-I-G-G-I-N-S at betterfuturesdc.com. And that is my okay. email, you guys. And anybody wants to reach out, you have any questions for me? Because I, I have a lot to share today anyway because you know the craft cafe is a place where we come as a resource and a place to a safe brave space i should say not just a safe space but a brave space where we touch on all the topics we go there we ruffle feathers i don't care about ruffling feathers i want to talk about the things that are really happening and the people who are boots on the ground that are really doing it that are really pushing the industry forward like you guys that are on the line today this is not something that's talked about every day. It's a big elephant in the room. It's like everybody knows it, but nobody does anything about it. So we are here to not just talk about it, but we're actually providing opportunities to have more conversation about it and really fix this and really usher more men into the industry and show people that look like themselves in the industry because a lot of times people don't know there's a place for them because they haven't really seen it. They haven't seen that image. You just kind of go with what you see all the time. You know, I'm like, well, I don't, as a young child, you might not even think that that's a path that you can take because you don't feel like it's for you or if you've seen anybody that looks like you that does it. So you guys being here talking about this and um, Tanya, it's Tonya, right? Did I say, did I say it right? Tonya, right? Yes, yeah, Tanya. You, you pronounce it correctly. So it's Tanya. Okay. Everybody calls me Tanya. I should get that right because I'm the <laughs> Tanya, they call me Latanya. So I'll get that right. So with Tanya, you talking about your dad. So that takes it even further back and what I heard um I think when we said this Jamal he was saying that back in the days there were way more men in the industry than there is now I thought it would have been flipped like it was more now than back then so I'm like wow that's an interesting little fun fact too you know yeah. so Jamal you and you and um Tanya know each other already right I wouldn't say know each other, but have have connected if she came to last year's conference. Right? That's what I mean. Like you, y'all, y'all. Okay, this is not y'all first running because she's been to the the conference. So I I love that. So I'm definitely going to be at the conference, you guys, and I'm encouraging anybody that it can actually physically get there. Uh, RSVP, sign up for this conference, and definitely come out and be there because. I'm, I'm not going to be taking the classes. I'm going to be, um, you know how when you at school, you know, you have the kids in the bathroom talking smack, that's going to be me. <laughs> so when y'all get on your breaks between classes, you can come and talk with me. We're going to be talking about all things craft. We're going to be talking about all the different opportunities that you guys have in DC. Um, I'm going to be talking about all the different leaders that's coming together to mentor you guys and really lead you in to this industry and roll out the red carpet because we want to see more and it's we see the success of it so i'm just glad to be a part of it so let's see now we're going into the next part so jamal i just want to go back to you because i know you have to go in a few so i wanted to kind of give you the floor to just shout out the different people behind this conference because one thing i know that you know you guys work really hard and i know uh 
Cameron personally, you know, we go way back, me and Cameron. So I know that that guy is super busy and he's super dedicated. So can you just shout out some of the guys that have helped to make this thing possible that you guys are doing? Just give them their flowers and tell, Absolutely. you know, represent Absolutely. them. So first and foremost, uh, Maurice Sykes, who's our senior advisor, um, has been behind the scenes. Um, Akeem Mott, who works for DC Early Learning Collaborative, uh, is keeps us connected, um, keeps the, the mission going forward, um, does a lot of administrative stuff, but also is a man who actually has his own business. Um, uh, I believe it's called like Little Libraries, and he's creating libraries all around Washington, D.C. And then you just have different men in different roles. So we have some principals. We have um, some men that work in early childhood programs, but are in other roles. So for example, at Educare, Mr. Enrique, who is our comprehensive service manager and works with food service and nutrition. We have some of our family engagement staff. We have some pre-K teachers. We have infant toddler teachers. Um, so there's been a lot of people. Dr. Gunling, who's been um, inspirational and motivational for everybody. Steve O'Connor, who works for the Department of Behavioral Health. So one of the things, although our goal is to recruit and retain 100 men of color, one of the things that we realize is there are a lot of men in children's lives that don't get that recognition that are doing um, the hard work and, and are integral in their development. And so we're bringing all those men together as well to, to be a part of this mission change. So a lot of men, I don't want to miss um, anybody. And then amazing supporters like you, Latoya, you know, who are supporting us. So, you know, shout out to the women who are supporting us and that come to our events and make sure that, um, you know, we we do all the things that we would forget to do um, because that's just not our skill set. So I appreciate you for inviting us on the show continuously. I do have to go, um, but thank you for everything. Thank you, Jamal. And I, as, as you sign off, I'm going to keep going, but thank you, Jamal, for just being a big part of this with your big schedule. And this is not the last, you know, we'll work on something for 2025 because we got more things to do. So thank you to Jamal Barry and the whole DC men in ECE. He's going to be signing off. And like I said, we're going to keep the torch flowing and we're going to keep on going with the conversation. So now I got you, Jamal, on here because I really, this is the thing, like I said, when it comes to the men in ECE, with this conference, I'm so excited because I want people to be able to network with each other and really bring those men from all over the country. So this is DC. You guys are not that far in Jersey. So if you have any mentees or, you know, uh, people, staff, that would want to come, you know, definitely share this with them and let them know they're welcome to come on down the road because, you know, Jersey's not that far. You don't even have to spend a night. Like you can come up and actually get back that same day if you wanted to, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, just let them know it's open to them too. I really love the fact that it is complimentary. I don't, like I said, I don't want to say free, but it's complimentary because that's a barrier for a lot of people is paying for these classes. And we all know, and you know, with, as far as an education in view gone, it is expensive to have these certifications, these degrees and all of those. So we want to make sure that not only are we helping with that, but we're also creating that path toward these careers and just not even just saying, hey, go that way, but, you know, providing the handholding and the coaching and um, shout out to Dr. Robin Gunland, as he said, he is one of the founders of Better Futures um, with his over 50 years of experience. He is one of my um, unofficial co-hosts and the founder of Craft and Better Futures. He uh, came into the industry as a teacher, you know, and of course, you know, that, that was over 50 years ago. So this was all his dream to really create a better future for the children. And him being a man is what was my inspiration to it because his partner, Jahi B. Davis, has over 25 years of experience in business finance. They came together to create this company to really push the childcare industry forward. When I came aboard, I came aboard as the host, you know, bringing more marketing strategies and things like that. But I also, my overarching skill is workforce development. And really that's where my lens really begin in this industry of seeing the strength of the business really relies on the amount of help you have and 
the quality of the people that's in there that really love to do this work. So when, like I said, when I would see guys coming in, they would slide right in because it was so r rare, you know, and they would have this calmness in the classroom that I, I didn't, I wouldn't even have to hear them raise their voice with the kids, you know, when they'd be like, one, two, three, I was on me. I would hear a lot with the guys. They'd be like, okay, time, for, time to go outside. Everybody line up. And the kids would be running in the lineup and everything. I'm like, what? We need more of this balance going on. So when I started working with Better Futures for with Dr. Robert Gunley and Jahi B. Davis, we're going to all these conferences, doing all these classes about ECE business. And what I realize is it is so lopsided. Like the room is full of women. You might have, okay, thank you. So Tanya's getting out of here. Yeah, I'm about to land this plane in a little while too. And I'm gonna go into my my uh commercial mode because we got so much coming on. I got to do all my updates after this. So Duma, I know you're at work. I know I see you're at the school, so I'm not going to keep you too much long. I'm going to let you go ahead and sign off. But listen, you have any last words for guys that are thinking about doing this in school, maybe starting college, or maybe even have a degree in early ed? Any words of wisdom for them yeah. coming into the industry? Yeah. So I, I think it was something you said earlier. Like I made a career. I raised three kids off of off of being, being being a part of public education and working with the young the younger group. There's nothing wrong with it. There's a lot of honor in it. Um, a lot of our boys um, definitely need need role models, need, need people they can look to and that they can relate to. They also definitely need people who understand them. So it's better for us, like, while our sisters do a great job of holding things down, like, we have to kind of lighten that load, too, by being present for, for our kids, too. Um, is a dynamic profession, you know, like, and I think that the way that the world is changing, it's going to need more people to enter these social spaces and these social spaces will give more security. Um, mm -hmm. And they'll give more financial security. And I think over time, definitely like since I've been in, I've watched the um, base, the base salaries go up, you know, they, they've more than doubled since I entered it in 96. And I, and I think that we're on a trajectory where we will keep doing it. Um, but if not anything, is is when I entered it, it was a way to give back to my community as well. Um, so when I started in Philly, nine, you know, in '98 or whatever, um, it was a way that I directly gave back to to kids and families that look like me. So it's not only was the financial benefit in it too; it's like a vocational benefit too. Yeah, like there's like the work that we do can impact generations. So it can't just be you're here for the money, because you're right you'll you'll never get enough of that out of anything. But what you can do is know that the way that you impact and you influence not only not only the kids in front of you, but the generations that will come after you is powerful. It's always been powerful to me. Yeah. Um, so that's just what I like. I honestly believe that I think over the next decade or so, we'll see a bigger influx of people. And we're hoping that those people will reflect all all sexes, all genders, all nationalities, um, especially for black and brown black and brown men to come and be in front of a lot of these black and brown kids that we service, no matter what community we're in. So. Well, I love that. Yeah. And Duvon, thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing your experience because, you know, this is definitely, this show is, is not a rehearsed show. We don't do anything scripted. It's all from the heart. And, you know, with your background and your education, you don't have to get prepared for this conversation. This is what you do every day. You know what I mean? So I thank you for coming on and, you know, just sharing everything that you're doing. And I'll send you some more information about the conference so that you can share it with others in your community definitely. so if they can definitely make it. It's going to be um, the 20, what did he say? Is it the 26th or the 23rd? 23rd. Okay. I'm going to show the flyer and everything because um, I'll send that out and I'll send it to you. All, All right. right. Take care. Talk soon. Thank you. I have You're a welcome. great rest of the weekend. And I'll the same. Have a great weekend. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Let's go. So you know that at Craft, we do everything, you guys. We are all things business and leadership. So we leadership focus, but all about BCE. And if you haven't noticed today, I am executive down, Craft Executive. Shout out to our first cohort of Craft Executive members. Now, let me give you a quick background on what Craft Executive is. Those of you who are just tuning in, if you're if you gotten this far and you stayed this long, then you already know what craft is. But craft executive is a special part of craft where we focus on 
child care associations and nonprofits. This is a way to have not just you as a leader, because guess what? We work with so many leaders. Um, hey, Adrienne, she's watching on Facebook. Hey, honey. She is just a prime example of one of our members who not only runs her own family child care business, she is an author. She writes books for children and adults, journals, you name it. She's all about mental health and just uh, well-being, okay? And she's just a staple in her community. I call her uh, Baskin Robbins because she's in business over 31 years, you guys. And not only does she do all of those things that I just mentioned, she also runs a great organization, a child care association in Philly called Quip. So shout out to you, Adrienne, and I die and the whole board. We know that when you are an association, you are giving up your time. Most of the time, most board members, they don't get paid, you guys. And I, that's something that I didn't know as a person that never worked with, I worked on at, on a nonprofit, but I didn't get into the board and stuff. I just did what I was supposed to do, right? So when I got into this business and learning more about business and really digging into nonprofits, I got to understand the layers of it. And I realized this is not common knowledge. This is something that you have to know. And with Craft Executive, not only do we take you as the board leader or the president or executive director, whoever you are that understands that something needs to change and you want to call in the pros to really help you fix it, you bring your board with you. So this is a group membership. All other memberships, our Craft Family, our Craft Lux memberships, our Craft Plus memberships, all of those memberships are individual. They're for you, the individual leader. But when you are not the only leader and you have an organization to push forward on top of what you have to do with your own business, you need craft executive. We are creating so many tools over here. Well, we have created, I should say, but we're creating more. So stay tuned. Right now with craft executive, you're able to bring on up to five board members. And we actually have a monthly payment plan because we understand that if you are not raising funds, then you probably don't have any money in the bank to pay. But we're not going to let you stay like that. If you Went to our class last night. Okay, you guys, we had uh, fundraising one-on-one, -on -one, grant writing one-on-one, -on -one, I should say, because good fundraising starts with you. And a lot of people don't know that when you're a nonprofit, nobody's going to just say, hey, knock, knock, nonprofit. You're a nonprofit. Let me give you some money. It does not work like that. You have to write to these grants. You have to apply for them. And if you don't know what you're doing, then you need to come on over to CRAP and let us teach you. Now, with CRAP Executive, we do it cohort style. It, everybody is not eligible for craft executive. Now, let me let you know, you do not have to already have a nonprofit. You don't have to be a nonprofit to take craft executive. You might want to turn into a nonprofit, which we had people do that during the last session. So shout out to the alumni from there. They were able to start their nonprofits and build a board, recruit, and really do it from scratch. And now they're already operating that fast and they just completed in uh i think that was april that they finished as you know because we work with funders we are the number one uh grant uh winners up around the town you know that those of you who know you know but i'm telling you grant uh i was grant grants better futures has raised over 50 million dollars in grant money for businesses like yours. So don't think that we're just talking smack. You can ask the people who are spending the money right now improving their businesses. So this is what I want you guys to remember. What we do at the end of Craft Executive is, is cohort style. is about eight to nine months of a sessions every month. Uh, we do classes and then we have the one-on-ones with your uh, actual team, your actual board, so that you can get it together for your specific challenges, whatever you, you, you know, wherever you are, meet you where you are. Now, at the end of this, not only do we go through, let me tell you the things that I learned. And this, and I'm just hosting you guys. I'm hosting, so I'm learning everything. Y'all know I'm writing every single thing down, right? So I learned how the funders actually look you up to see if you're eligible, see what you do with your money. They have all of these um, tax uh, forms that you have to actually submit. And it tells you about the organization. It tells a lot. And I didn't even know these things existed. These are the type of things that Jahi's going to teach you guys how to do, how to show up well and actually win the grant because these are the things that they're going to be looking for. So Jahi knows what they do in the behind those scenes. He's the worked on the boards. He worked in the bank. So he knows exactly what they're doing in that room when they say no, when they say, uh-uh, you can't have it. We're not giving it to you. 
So we're going to make sure that you guys have the tools to fix your board, make sure that your bylaws are intact. We're going to make sure that you have the right board because you might not have the right soil to grow in. And that's why nothing's growing. So sometimes we got to, you know, mix things up, you know, really evaluate who you have on your board. Are they um, fundraisers? Everybody needs to fundraise. People don't know that either. So we're going to teach you how to fundraise. We had the class last night. Grant writing run on one. So if you were in the classroom, then you knew what was going on. If you're not, definitely check us out. It was complimentary. So anybody could have came. But let me show you some things. Now, with our craft executive, we are going to be giving out uh, 10 grants. We're going to have 10 grants available um, that we know that's open for the uh, the actual. Hold on, let me play this. We want to make sure that you guys know that this is available and you can get to it. These are ones that actually care about grants that care about what you're doing. And that's the type of things that we're going to be sharing when you come to Craft Executive. It's not just, you know, here's some grants, try them. No, these are going to be targeted grants that are actually for your industry and what you're trying to do. Associations okay. and nonprofits looking for funding. So don't this know is where to start. Craft Executive is now accepting applications. Scan the QR code now. That QR code. We are accepting applications right now for Craft Executive. So go to our website, you guys. You can scan this QR code. Here, let me put it into. Hey, child care associations and nonprofits looking for funding, but don't know what. Okay, I'll pause it right there. Now, can you guys see this? All right. Now, I want to make sure that you have this link. You can go to our website at www.betterfuturesdc.com slash craft executive, you guys, and go ahead and sign up. There's an interest form on there. Sign up for demo. And also, if you get the membership right now, what we have is you can actually pay for the first person and then you can do all the rest of the uh, members monthly. OK, but you got to pay for that first member up front. And we actually changed the prices for you. So just go on and check it out. You can get started right now at $4.50, uh, okay? Or no, $4.95. I'm sorry, I'll pull it up. Uh, let me get this out of here. But I wanted to just definitely show you guys that because Craft Executive is the jam. I'm telling you, we had people on last night who said that they went through, we had alumni on last night that said they went through Craft Executive and the people they went through with learned so much that they went and started. I mean, not to laugh, but I'm like, wow, they learned so much in that cohort that they went and started their own uh, nonprofit because they learned so much. You know, so that just if that doesn't um, tell you that crap executive is off the hook and it's going to change your life. Oh, come on now, then I don't know what will come on. People are like, wait, this really makes a lot of sense. You know, so let me show this. I want to show you what this looks like when you go to the website, you guys. All right. That way, you know, it'll take you there easier and you'll know you've made it. OK, so here you go. Can you see this? OK, this is I'll take the survey. You're going to click this button right here. Take the survey and get on in here. Like I said, you could have registered for the class. You can still do it. But um, if you're not a member, you're not going to get the recorder. So, you know, that's just that. But that's what it looks like, you guys. So. With Craft Executive, sign up now. Now, just so you know, the next thing up is Craft Lux. Now, y'all know Craft Lux is pretty much one of my favorite. Well, I, you know what? I guess I'm biased because I love all the brands. Craft Family is definitely by far my favorite. And it's probably because Craft Family Child Care is my baby. So I feel like, you know, I have no choice but to say, say it's my favorite. But I love all of the brands. But Lux, honestly, I... I'll just give it up. Lux is the best deal out of every one of them, I feel, because not only do you get, uh, let me make this big. Can you see this? Okay, guys. Now, that's me. Yes, that's me. Um, I I put this on there. It's me on there, guys, because with Craft Lux, I am giving up a lot of myself because you are going to get $300 in marketing dollars. And you know I run a marketing department because I do all the logos all the websites, all the digital media that you see coming out of Craft, Canoe, Better Futures, our partners, our co-branded material, that's all coming from my department. So I want to do something for the industry because a lot of people don't believe that marketing is a huge part of what they need to do to grow their business. And I'm here to say you're wrong about that. So if you don't see what you want to see in your business, 
That's because nobody knows about it. How do people know about your business? You have to market it. So that's why we have upgraded our Craft Lux membership to Craft Lux Plus, you guys. Craft Lux Plus is going to come with $300 of marketing credit that you can use within 10 days of you getting the membership. So if you get in the membership today, in 10 days, you can it'll, it'll register on your account and you can actually use it. Now, the project has to be over $300, you guys. You can't just say a $300 project for the $300. It has to be over the $300, obviously. But this is the kicker. You can save them up. Like if you're not ready right now, what you can do is every year that you renew, you'll get an extra $100 to tap onto that. So you can save them up. Okay, let's say you, you want to do a rebranding, but you are remodeling your home right now. So you're not ready yet. So you're going to let them accumulate. So go ahead and get it now. Now, if you guys are already a Craft Lux member, guess what? It's not over for you because I know how they do, how it feels when you get the cable, right? And then you go into Walmart and they say, oh, you know, new members going to get it for $50 and you already paid 200 And now say, well, I already have that. And they say, oh, well, this is only for new people. You don't get anything. You, you can stay there. And then you feel like crap, like, dang, I should have waited. But guess what? We're not going to let you fall. We're not going to do that. If you already have a Craft Lux membership, guess what? We are giving you to the, it's a couple of days. You got 15 um, to the 15th to upgrade your membership. So you don't have to pay the full price. You just pay the difference. If you had one already, you just pay the difference to the new membership. Okay. And then you automatically get grandfathered into the uh, plus. But if you let your membership go away, like if you let it expire and then you go on, you're going to have to pay the full price. Okay. So don't let it do that. Go ahead and upgrade your membership today. Go on www betterfuturesdc.com and go ahead and upgrade your membership. You go to the homepage, it'll say the 300 upgrade now. You click on it and you can upgrade. Okay, but guess what? It's a limited time. You only had two weeks. This started October 1st and we're already, what, on the 11th? So come on now because we, we got these projects flowing and a lot of people have taken advantage of it. So my team is real busy right now and I want to keep it that way because we want to make sure that you show everybody your business, Okay. Now, next thing up, you like I said, we are full of events. We always got something new at Craft because you know I have an event spirit. So I love when we have things going on. Y'all know I cannot contain myself when there's things going on. And as you know, we are Bed Futures DC. So we are uh, actually, uh, I don't want to say rooted in DC, but we are in DC. Hold on. I want to I want to play that. I have a video too, but I'm trying to pay, play the uh just the, here we go. Because I want to share this flyer with you guys too. Because I always got to keep you guys updated. You know, this is more of a resource too. So you guys know what's going on and what are some things you can take advantage of. Now, those of you who are in DC or local to DC, Maryland, Virginia, even if you're in Pennsylvania, some parts of Pennsylvania is really close to DC. And if you know what I know about pure play every day, if you, I, I'm telling you, shout out to Maryland. If you are in Maryland, then you probably have heard of Pure Play every day. These are one of our newest partners. Shout out to Patty Stein. She's the executive director and she's a certified trainer for that organization. And she's the face. I see her everywhere, you guys. We are in conferences all the time. It's only right that we get together and bring her into the fold. So we're going to be presenting her along with Kaplan. Kaplan is um, going to be sponsoring it with us. And pushing Patty and Pure Play every day. That organization is amazing, you guys. They are our signature play partners, and they are going to be thinking outside the box. Now, guys, this is a complimentary session. This is for owners and directors only, okay? Owners and directors only. We want to show you what we can bring to your center. We want to show you what you can do that really stimulates the children and really goes along with all of your curriculum needs and it really pushes your center to the top of the line because everybody comes to learn right because this is certified uh trainer you know you get your your clock hours and all that good stuff right but guess what you're gonna stay to play one thing i know about patty she's a whole ball of fun and she makes you feel like a kid again and they do it all with loose parts so it's a lot of steam activities a lot of recycling going on so it's a good course so definitely check it out. There's a QR code on here. It's going to be down here in Northeast. So shout out to DC, 1105 50th Street, Northeast, Washington, DC. Definitely RSVP. Scan the code. We're going to be talking about the play environment, space and materials, strategy, and creating a useful facilitation plan to get all of this 
done efficiently, okay? And the kids are going to love it, promise you. Okay, so this is going on October 23rd, 9 to 12. So it's an event, you guys. Definitely is all the big wigs are going to be there. So come to network too. So, you know, bring your business cards. You want to be hooking up with everybody that's in there because they have the gateway to more support for your centers. And remember, you don't have to live in D.C. to uh, take advantage of this session. But we want you to come out and show your support and get the knowledge, okay? And bring it on back to your center. Bring that spice to life because we already know that she's going to blow the house down, but you need to know it too. So come on down. All right. And I think that's pretty much everything um, for now. If you guys are craft members, that means that you are grandfathered into our Craft Plus app, which I'm so excited about, you guys. I'm always on it. I know, I, I know, I know I host the shows. I already seen it. But this is how good the material is and the content is that it stands the test of time and I can watch it over and over again. And I take notes because there's a lot of things that I told you guys, I'm not just the host. I'm actually a member too, because I use this knowledge for my business. So shout out to the Wave Bootcamp. Oh yeah, let's go Let's go into it. The Wave Bootcamp is in effect, you guys. We already had episode, episode see, see, session two of three. We have one more and we have a special treat for you guys that's in the Wave Bootcamp, you guys. We got the child care tax pros. That's the secret. Don't tell nobody. They're coming in and they're going to be doing a tax segment for y'all with about bookkeeping and all of that good stuff that your tax person is going to love you for, okay? Trust me, like I said, we got the pros. We got ADP. We just had a session with them telling you what you need to know before you walk into 2025 because there's been some new regulations and legislations and business that you want to make sure you're abreast of. So if you didn't catch that, it's on our app right now. So go to your Craft Plus app. Those of you who are members, you should have gotten your login in your email. So if you haven't, please come and let me know. Y'all know my email because I email you all the time. Just re hit reply and say, hey, Latoya, I didn't, I can't find mine. Check your spam though first. That Check your spam because sometimes it slides into the spam because it does come from the app and not from me. Okay. So make sure you guys are logging into your app. Let me know your feedback. What are your favorite classes? What have you watched over and over again? Tell me about it because those are the things that I need to know so that I can make this app better for you guys. Okay. So I want to know your feedback. Coming up this weekend, from stress to achieving, um, from stress to thriving, that's what it is, achieving financial success, personal finance. Now, you know, we talk all about business finance, but one thing we have to tackle is the beast of our personal finance. And we have gotten here, you guys. Shahi has done it again. He has created a boot camp style three-part series class that attacks your personal finance. So we already had session one. We got session two coming up tomorrow, you guys. So make sure you are registered for it. If you haven't seen your registration, then you need to call me, okay? Because I already sent them out. I've been sent them out. So we're kicking that off, I believe, at 10 o'clock tomorrow. So y'all better be ready. Have y'all budgets ready because y'all had homework. Have your pencil, well, your pen and your paper ready because you're going to have to take notes because we're digging in, okay? We're going to get our personal finances together because we can't work on our business if our, finance, our personal finances is all over the place. Okay, so what else do we have next? Because you know we got the whole lineup. I'm always I'm always checking my calendar, you guys, because it's always something going on. All right, so I think that's it for right now. But I want to just make sure that you guys were able to scan those codes. And if you have any questions, definitely just let me know. And make sure that you are following us on all platforms, you guys. You are connected to us on Facebook, on LinkedIn. We are on LinkedIn as uh, Crack by Better Futures. We're actually Craft by Better Futures on Instagram. On Facebook, we are Craft Cafe Live. And we're also Craft Cafe Live on YouTube. We just started a YouTube channel. So please go and support you guys. It is free to support. Just go on and click subscribe and like the videos. Watch the videos, like them, share them, the whole nine. We appreciate you. And shout out to all of our craft members and our members that just got um, their craft bundles and they got their hundred dollar gift card and their t-shirts and their new craft mugs and if you have yours definitely bring it to class tomorrow all right because i want to see you there all right and we are going to land this plane thank you guys thank you for being craft members and making this possible for this platform i'll see you at the next session and i'll definitely see you at the men and ece conference have a great weekend guys bye